Greetings, I the War Al greets you, and welcome to another episode of Matchmaking Academy, where you are the star for all the wrong reasons, but don't worry, we are gonna help you figure out what those reasons are and help you improve at Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Our hero today is Taste Vengeance, spelled with a three instead of an E, cause that's cool. He is a legendary eagle player, dots her, and his favorite fish is a Siamese fighting fish, which doesn't sound like a real thing. This round, he had a question about getting an entry here on Bombsite B, but then, of course, not sealing the deal. I believe we've talked about a similar issue to this before, and you can sort of see what's happening already on the mini-map here, as he now tries to move into Bombsite B with his his nephew's nerf gun, the Stadtrak Galil AR Eco, and oh my goodness, what a noob. All right, so there's the pick. Right now, terrorists are in a great position. They have a pick. Um, they have a possibility of pushing into bomb site B. They have a bunch of people on banana. Check out where the bomb is right now. It's here at middle. If they were to take advantage of this, you sort of have two different things you could do. The first is, we got that pick. There's only going to be one guy here at B. Here's what we do. Fluxy is going to grab this bomb, rotate, and push into B. We're going to run in there and smoke off and just take the site and kill this guy. Plant the bomb. Boom, boom, victory. The other thing is to chill. To wait, to assume that Happy here is going to re-smoke off this position, that he'll fall back, and that these CTs are going to spread themselves out a little bit thin. You now have a 5 versus 4, you can rethink what you're going to do and set up for a bombsite take later in the round. Keep in mind this is matchmaking, we have 2 minute round times, you can always wait for the smokes to clear. There's a lot of time. Now let's watch what actually happens here. So, Vengeance seems to have the idea of, let's charge forward. A smoke goes down, so that CT did throw it. Now, you have to think like, alright, we'll let them have that. We're not we're either going to push through this smoke and keep trying to push this guy, which could be a huge disaster, or we'll reshuffle. Notice here that the CTs at middle are not actually rotating. Now, that just shows the lack of coordination and teamwork. I kind of, like, are they actually Legendary Eagle? Because why isn't this guy starting to rotate over to B. You would assume that he would start to do that, and then you could actually take advantage of A. So this is all a little bit strange to watch unfold. Now we have four players on the T side pushed up banana, and the bomb is dropped over here with the Lurk. I mean, I guess Fluxy's playing Lurk at this point, but they don't have bomb control. There's no reason to push into the site. Why would you push into the site if you don't have control of the bomb? This is just all very sloppy from these guys. Smoke is down. Seems like there's a double smoke. Uh, I think that he tried to throw his own smoke to block off this position. By the way, we have a specific tutorial about how to throw these smokes uh, to block off right here and to block off right here and how to flash into the site as well as how to Molotov oranges where Happy's actually standing and the new box. They don't use any of these. Hey, it looks like a face. They don't use any of these. This smoke was a complete failure right here. He didn't throw it properly. He tried to line it up and throw through this smoke, and he, like, hit the wall here and bounced and, and just absolutely failed it. So, doesn't even have the smoke in the right position. Shouldn't push through this smoke. It's just, this is a disaster right here. Now, it seems like the terrorists are like, all right, this is, yeah, let's try to abort from this. This is not a good idea. They start to fall back. Some of them kind of hang around here. This guy, our, our hero, decides to push through, and at this point, look, RST actually has rotated back. Look at this. So they put two players at B. They think it's going to be a push here. Those flashes sort of gave it away. Think about it. The right move from the terrorists is to identify that they should take bomb site A. The idea is like, okay, they're probably going to rotate a guy over here. Let's quickly push into bomb site A. We have the bomb in position there. We'll rotate back. And they just take their time. And at this point, I mean, since we're talking about this specific player, Taste Vengeance, there's no reason to push through this smoke and push up here at A. You're now dealing in a one versus two. You're, you're heavily uh, outgunned. They're on both sides of you. They have a crossfire. This is just not where you push. And their player at mid does get picked. There's only one player holding A right now. They're trying to push in with two players. Check this out. He actually has a buddy moving in here to help him out. There's Rack. And he gets taken down from the guy at CT. Doesn't even look at the corner. And look, there wasn't a smoke down. The smoke comes down after he dies. Number one rule for taking B on Inferno. And look at this. Look, both of the smokes are actually in position here. The T smokes. It was just a little bit late when he pushed in. Do not push B unless there is a smoke off right here, if you can actually throw it. It is a terrible idea to push B if there's not a smoke here, because the CT from this position is really strong as you try to push in. So always make sure this is smoked. This is a, a nice extra smoke to throw. And I think he just he jumped the gun a little bit there and shouldn't have pushed forward. All right. 
Just, and that all came down to team coordination. And, and when you're playing at the legendary eagle level, you really should be thinking about how to work as a team, how to rotate, all that stuff, instead of just worrying about your individual play, instead of just like doing the numbers game of, all right, we picked a guy B, let's go B. Because you have to assume that the CTs are going to be playing it properly, even though they were a little bit B heavy, and I guess the right choice was to move back to A. Uh, buddy. Buddy. Um, the round's going, buddy. Your teammates are out there. Stuff's happening. You there? Down smoke. It's go time. There's terrorists attacking. We need a hero. We oh, here he is. He's here, guys. Grenade. Finally, step one to winning Counter-Strike. Show up. Actually play the game. At this point, he's really been of absolutely zero help to his team. He has not been able to buy a weapon as a result, despite having $10,000 in the bank. His real question on this round, which I'm surprised he picked this round in particular, considering the silliness, is how to retake A on CT side. Now, retakes on Inferno are very difficult. It's a map where retakes are probably the most difficult, Bombsite A in particular. And that is because of this bomb plant position. Check this out. You can watch it from the boiler side. You can watch it from graveyard. You can watch it from site. You can watch it from the apartments. You can watch it from many different positions inside of the pit. This is just a really difficult bomb plant position to deal with. And most of the time, if you don't immediately put yourself in a situation where you can take it, you're going to go for a save. Now, we do have a longer bomb timer in matchmaking than we do inside of the professional tournaments. Let's watch how they actually handle this and how Vengeance deals with it. So he's waiting for the smoke to clear before pushing out. He's going to push with his teammates. We see three CTs now moving in. And smoke is starting to clear now, so he's going to push it. And let's look at this. Right there. Crosshair placement as you push out of that door. I know his buddy was a little bit in front of him. We're going to talk about that inside of the game pretty soon. CTs pick two players, put it into a three versus two. This is really nice. And what you really need to be thinking about in this situation as you guys are moving in is locating all of the terrorists, communicating it, and figuring out how to take them all down. So it's a three versus two. You just have to locate two people. They're moving in fast, which is really nice. We have shots fired from Pit. They should call it and say, all right, it's Pit. Let's focus on that. He's looking over at Graveyard right now. That player just decided to throw down a defuse and goes down as a result. Um, there's only a single smoke that they believe is going to hold them off from Pit. You need multiple smokes to hold players off from Pit. That was not the time to do a fake defuse. They had to focus on either killing these players or exiting the site and getting out and saving. There's enough time to win this. And he goes down. Did not have his crosshair really pointed in the right direction there. Let's hop in game and talk about this scenario a little bit. Just know that they do lose it. It comes down to a one versus two. Not enough time and... Yeah, at this point, he doesn't even have enough time to defuse that thing. And that bomb is definitely going down. I'm a counter-terrorist, and I want to retake bomb site A with my buddies moving in from the library. Pretty specific, but let's talk about it. Bomb site A is a very difficult site to retake because of all the different positions the terrorists could play. We talked about it before with the bomb plant right there. So let's think about this critically a little bit. You have a player inside of the library. That smoke was there. And he, he seemed to just be waiting for that smoke to clear before pushing out. When he has a teammate in position here, he actually could have pushed out of that smoke because he had somebody sort of watching his back and watching these angles. And he really could have pushed through that smoke. But let's pretend that there is no smoke there or he's waited for it to clear. So, as you're moving in here, think about this. You're visible here from players inside of the site, and this is a place where they're going to watch. Let's look at it from their perspective. So, I'm a terrorist, and I'm going to be sitting here looking over the top of this box, waiting for you. I can even pop up and down like this, even though you're still going to be able to see the headshot from this position. And I'm just going to try to pick you as you run by. I'm also going to get intel of that. As you're inside of this position, as soon as you see that door like this, you should be looking at this angle. You shouldn't just uh, run by, wait here, and then try to push out like this, because you've just passed so many different positions you haven't checked yet. And you can check a few of them from inside here. You can see them if you just run by like that. It's very difficult to get the shot on you, and you'll see. You'll get the intel. Like, you'll see if they're there. If they try to shoot at you, you'll have that intel. And then you can re-peek here and sort of, like, scan the area and look at these positions. Like, look over the top of this box for a head to pop up. Look over here by that pillar as you move out. So you can scan this little area right here, and that's generally where the T's are going to be looking at. So you can identify if there's somebody inside of the site, which is good intel to give your teammate. Now you're ready to actually push out of here. Now the best way to do it is, I mean, if you have a teammate on this side watching, so that you only have to focus on 
this angle right here, and then you can move out. But if you don't have that, you're going to have to flash yourself out. So, because running out here, look at all the positions you're now visible from. You've got the apartments. Somebody could be watching it inside of the site, behind the box, inside of the pit, jumped up on that thing. Uh, somebody standing up there at, at uh, graveyard, somebody up on this pillar thing. Just a million positions to deal with. It's really impossible. So you got to throw a pop flash. Worst way to throw a flash is just go like, oh, I'm throwing a flash. You'll see that coming a mile away, especially at the eagle level. So you want to try to do a pop flash. So one of the things you can do is actually run with it with a right click and sort of roll it out the door. That was terrible. That was really bad. Let's redo that. Sort of roll it out the door. So it comes right out the door like that. They're not going to see that coming. It's just going to pop right there, and it, that would actually would have hit them. See, I had to, I had to do this. Like that. Was fine. Or you could bounce it with yourself and run with it like this and push out with the flash. Right? So the flash goes off, you can still see. They're going to look away if they think the flash is coming out. They're going to get flashed if they try to look at you, and you'll probably get a chance of getting the kill. So now it's time to actually push into the site. There's a million different places to check. You have to keep your crosshair pointed where you think those players are going to be, and part of that is getting intel with your teammates. So you had players, one of them was like pushing up on the left side, one was over there at Boiler. You call and you say where these guys are. Like, one is inside of the site. All right, we know that. One's in the pit. Let's focus on that. So he's going to walk up. His buddy's over here on the left side. You're going to walk up on the right side, and you're going to watch the pit position like this. You don't have to worry about this. Your teammate's watching that. Then you have Graveyard, and that would be a real good position for this player to watch like this. As you push out to pre-shoot there, uh, check this position, make sure he's not going to kill your buddy from Graveyard. Now it's time to push into this site area. You have to sweep it again, keep your crosshair pointing where guys may be. Look at this, there's tons of little positions that noobs could sit here like, eh, eh, and wait like that. Little corners in the site. And again, this is why Inferno is so difficult to retake Sykes on, because it's designed like that. You have to check all of this. You have to move in there and check pretty much, and you have to go quickly, because the biome timer is ticking down. I, you know, it's a tall order, but this is how the game is played. You have to move in there and check every position like that if you think somebody may be inside of the site. Unless you have intel about where these guys are, you got to make sure you check them. you got to run in here, check these positions. And our buddy finally got killed as he got to this point. Now, they tried to smoke off... The pit. Sorry about that throwing of the gun. You know that I use um, I use G as my smoke grenade button. However, when I when I have this weird crosshair out here, G is drop, so I got a little bit screwed up there. So they threw a smoke. It was like right here or something. You can't smoke off pit. Even with two smokes, you can't fully smoke off pit. It's a very difficult place to smoke off. Look at this. With this smoke down here, how he finally got killed. The player went up, jumped up here, or even he actually just kind of like stood right here, like this. And he can shoot you from this position right here. So he has to be mindful of that. You know he's in the pit. That's where you actually should be looking right now is right here as he's moving up. He had his crosshair like up here or over here or something. And the guy jumped up and killed him. You got to come around the corner looking at that spot, making sure he's not going to push you like that. Then as you get over here, you can check this position here. That other guy was trying to like bait him out so they peeked. That's a good opportunity to kill him if you're watching because that's where they're going to peek. Look at it from the pit's perspective. I can watch the bomb from here, so I'm going to peek it if I hear a defuse sound. I can watch from here. I'm going to watch Boiler from here. can jump up at any time. Very difficult spot to deal with. You're going to have to kill them before you can take that bomb. So you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to flash uh, into the pit. You're going to have to push them in there. You're going to have to kill them. You're going to have to make it happen. Smoking them off is just not... It's not really going to help. This smoke could help them take position and get into the site, but it's not going to help finally take these players out inside of the pit, and they have to push them. So one of the things he could have done, actually, is while you're watching this angle right here, since the smoke was down here, you could have moved up and actually jumped into the pit and focused on taking the players out and making sure they were dead. Would have been probably a, a much better decision. Because I don't think you're going to be able to push these players from here. You're going to run up and jump up here, and now you're visible from everything at once. That would be a terrible idea. And think about it. Even from inside of this... Oh, there we go again. There we go again! Let's say you even smoke out this critical position. So there's the smoke. This guy can't do anything. Is it ga? Even with that, I can jump up here, and look, I can see over the top of the smoke immediately. Pit is so difficult to deal with. You have to clear it. You have to kill the players in there. You can't rely on these smokes. I mean, even if you get up here, player can jump up here. Look at this. Look at all these positions. This is tough. This is tough to deal with, guys. All right, so yeah, and at a certain point, you have to decide how much time do we have left on that bomb timer. Maybe it's time to fall back. Maybe it's time to save and just try to prevent them from taking the site on the next round. Hmm, this situation looks similar. We have three CTs moving into retake bomb site A from the terrace who have just planted the bomb. Notice that they've actually planted it inside of the site. This is going to be an even easier retake. 
So let's watch it from our hero's perspective, Olaf Meister, who is playing the, sort of the same position that our our uh, our hero, Taste Vengeance, was playing. Olaf Meister here, the best player in, in the world, is going to show you how it's done. All right, we talked about this inside of the game. Look, checks that position. It is smoked off, but that's the first place he looks. Because of that smoke, he's able to push out here, still watching it. Going to even pre-shoot that spot because he knows somebody likes to sit there and peek it. And once that smoke starts to clear... Well, they haven't been able to push into the site just yet. Aren't being as fortuitous as you guys. And boom! JW is going to take over this position, so we'll jump up on... Uh, who's continuing to spray that common spot. Knows the players in the site. See him focusing on that pit position, which is another very common spot. And then at this point, CT say... All right, we can't retake this. This is not worth it. Let's try to save these weapons for the next round. Maybe even go for some exits here. JW doesn't get the memo and decides to attack the whole team and he dies. But that's okay because CTs are going to be saving here. And you have to consider that the bomb timer is 10 seconds slower or 10 seconds faster actually inside of these professional level matches. They just do not have the time to move in and retake bomb site A. For the most part in a professional level... The counter-terrorists are going to rotate as fast as they can here from B, from either of these positions, to prevent A from being taken in the first place. So this is a very rotate-heavy map for the CTs. Ding-dong, the Olaf Meister is dead. Big thanks to Taste Vengeance for sending in the demo. For all you guys, for all your submissions, received a bunch after that video I put out. They're all really nice. I have like, it's like, I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. I have so many to choose from. So yeah, big thanks to you guys for sending those out. Let's get an Owl Vision. I really gotta thank you guys, because after that video I posted on how to submit a matchmaking academy demo, I have so many to choose from right now, it's really exciting. Uh, and they're all well written, they all follow the instructions pretty well. Thank you guys so much for that, this is awesome. And yeah, don't be shy about sending in your demo if you're low ranked. Don't be shy about sending in your demo if you're higher ranked, if you're in the Eagle or Supreme or even Global Territory. I take all of them, I would really like to do some of those, so yeah, thanks again guys.